Okay, we're going to try and attack chapter six here today. Let's uh, start with our opening prayer. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Okay, so uh, we'll start off. Are there any last minute questions for chapter six? Oh, sorry, five. I was not, thinking I had one during the homework, but I can't remember it now. So if I need to, I'll Facebook okay. it to you or something later. All right. Well, we'll dive into chapter six then. And um, Now, one thing, <laughs> you know, I was rather puzzled. Well, let me, let me, uh, here, let me switch here. Uh, okay. I was rather puzzled. Uh, you know, they, they go on here. Whoop, whoop, let me expand that. There we go. There, is that better? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, let me zoom it up a little more. There, whoa. Uh, well, okay, that might be too big. Anyway, you know they they talk about the uh, the roads out of uh, Rome, and they give you this rather teeny weeny little map. <laughs> I go, well, what's going on with this? So I go to the book, yeah. and come to find out they have a much much better map in the book. Yeah. So um, before I get to it, I I did look up um, the Roman roads. Uh, Rome had an extensive network of roads. Uh, they were basically built to expedite or, or ex excuse me, expedite uh, the military. Um, you know, it's much faster to move troops along reasonably um, good ground than it is, you know, over cow paths and cross fields and especially mountains. It's 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 um, slows them down. So that's one of the reasons why the the Romans were were a little were able to control large parts of the uh, region about the Mediterranean, but also for commerce. Uh, it, it was double, and so you can kind of get a feel for how extensive uh, the major Roman roads were. But the ones we're concerned with are the ones in Italy itself. Uh, here, of course, is Rome. Uh, they talked about the Via um, uh, Flam uh, Flamina, which starts in Rome and goes to Arminium. It was constructed by Gaius Flaminius during his censorship in 220 BC. In fact, all the ones they mention in, in this chapter uh, were constructed in the um, number of centuries before, you know, before Christ. Uh, hey, Mike, Michael? Mm -hmm. Censorship. Can you explain? Is that is related to census? Oh, okay. No, it is not. A censor in uh, ancient Rome was a Roman magistrate who was in charge of the operations of the city. Um, probably the well, even mayor doesn't quite fit. Um. He would Did make he sure it? the infrastructure was up to snuff. So uh, he would make sure the sewers were working. He would make sure uh, the roads were properly repaired. Um, Head of department works. Yeah, something like that. Yes, yeah, so closer to that. Uh, they did have a certain, uh, oh, well, they were also in charge of uh, morals and law and order. So they kind of had an all-purpose hat. So, um, but no, they really didn't have to do with, you know, when we think of censor, well, okay, we think of the census where they count people. No, that's not really it. And we think of censors in the sense of, um, uh, you know, editing stuff or, or, or um, preventing, uh, um, on un, un, unpopular opinions, <laughs> uh, that really wasn't theirs. No, they they were a, they were imagine they were a, it, it's actually related to a number of Latin words uh, that have to do with with uh, its um, administration and, and organization. Uh, but they're they're called censors. So, 
Uh, let's see. Oh, the V, uh, let's see the, uh, via, uh, oh, and the other word, notice it's Flaminius who's got, who got, who bought it, uh, or excuse me. The, generally the people that, the person that built it or was in charge of its construction, it is usually named after. So the Via Flaminia was Flaminius, the Via, uh, Via Aurelia, sorry, the Via, in English it's Via, in Latin it's Via, short I. Via Aurelia was considered constructed by Gaius Aurelius Cotta. And then the Via Latina, um, this little guy right in there, hopefully you can see that on the screen. Uh, that is a very old road. We know it was constructed before 334 BC, uh, but we don't really know who did it. And then the Via Appia, which is a long, all the way here to Brundisium. Yeah, if you remember the city of Brundisium in the first chapter. And then the, uh, the Via Appia. Uh, and then the v Via Emilia, which goes up here to the north to Genoa. How these roads got, oh, and, the, and then Ostia. This is a very important port town. Uh, Rome was on the, um, uh, the Tiber River, and they did tend to ship cargo up the Tiber River. But if you've ever seen the Tiber, it's not an impressive river, okay? <laughs> uh, so what happened is, is eventually the, uh, the Romans built uh, or, or built a port city there that was able to much better handle all of the shipping that was coming into Rome. Uh, and so Ostia was a very important Roman town. And if you get to Italy, uh, Ostia Antica, uh, ancient Ostia, there's all sorts of beautiful ruins there. So not just in Rome. So anyway, that's the layout. Uh, what I will do now, I added these uh, slides today. Uh, what I'll probably do, I don't know if I'll resend the slide, the entire set of slides, or I'll just send Picture, the, the copies of these pictures. I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'll, I'll see what happens when I print it as, as a uh, black and white. It, it may lose all its uh, flavor. But um, yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it for those. So there they are. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's get started on the Latin itself. So I'll get started on a paragraph. Oh, yeah, a couple of words. Porta, gate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Muris, wall. Uh, you know, uh, Porta, Celi, Stella Maris, gate of heaven, uh, star of the sea. Um, so it's, uh, you may have seen that in, in, um, in the hymn. Anyway, in Italia. Hey, Michael, I'll start if you want. Oh, sure. Go right ahead. Okay. In Italia, multe et magna via sunt, via apia, via latina, via familia, via aurelia, via amelia, via apia est inter Romam <laughs> Buddhism. When it first, I keep saying Buddhism. No, there's no Buddhists here. <laughs> I know. I was talking to a guy about Buddhism and I still oh, okay. both run. Your, your Buddhist cell got brain cell. Yeah, so excuse me. If I'll do a Freudian slip now and then. Via Latina inter Romum et Capium. Capua. Capuam. Uh, via Familia inter Romum et Armilium. Via Aurelium inter Romum et Genuam. Via Emilia inter. Arinium et placentium. Placentium. Well, it's AM, placentium. Yes. Yeah, that's what I said. I thought, okay. Bundusium, Capua, Ar Arminium. Arminium. There's no IUM. Armi Arminum. 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 Jeez. Yeah, they uh, keep changing those endings. Isn't that annoying? I know. <laughs> I know. It's exactly. Genoa, placentia. Ostia magna opia sunt. Yes. Ubi est ostia, ostia est probe romam. Tucnum quoque. 
Tusculum, Grr. Tusculum coque, prope romam s. Rudicium non est probe romam, said procule, procule ab Roma, via apia longa est, via latina non tam longa est, quam via apia, quam longa est via familia, nique ea tam linga est quam via apia, Tiberius fluvius non tam longus est quam fluvius parus. Okay, not bad. Uh, I'm trying. Yeah, no, no, not bad, not bad. Uh, let's see, the one, did you, where was it? Uh, procul. I, short, o. short, procul, short O. Proc, procul. Yeah. Procul. Yeah. And, and ideally via, and I know we're all going to say that. I'm going to say, I catch I know, it's, it's the, is the it, with ah, short eye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I struggled on that one. What modern city is Tusculum closest to? Ah, I'm glad you asked that because I actually looked that up. Um, Rome. It, it's only, a, it's not very, okay, let me, let me bring up the map again. Uh, let's see here. You can see Rome. here that yeah, Tusculum it's next door to Rome. Yeah, you're right. is very close to Rome. Mm -hmm. Tusculum mm -hmm. is a ruins right now. Um, it was a very important city in the early centuries of the uh, Republic and the Empire because uh, Rome tended to be, uh, and we can all relate to this right now, very oppressive heat-wise in August. Uh, hmm. It had high humidity um, and it was crowded and noisy and smelly and whatnot. So the, uh, the rich tended to have villas not too far outside Rome at Tusculum. Uh, Cicero, or Cicero in, in is the way he would have pronounced his name, had a villa in Tusculum. So uh, what happened is uh, in the 11th, sorry, 12th century, uh, various events, a uh, uh, couple invasions, various other things that went on basically destroyed the city. And so hmm. it, it was uninhabited or is uninhabited since then. It's now an archaeological site. Uh, I don't know how much is there you can actually visit, I, I would imagine. It being Italy uh, and tourism being a big thing, they've they've made it as much you know you know they've made it into a nice uh, place to visit. Um, but it, it's only about four kilometers out. It's in what's known as the Alban Hills, and interestingly enough, it's actually on a volcano, a long extinct volcano. So um, Romans weren't known for locating some of their cities um, in. Um, terribly safe places in some cases. Michael? Yeah. I uh, got a question. Uh, you recall from chapter five, we learned that Ostia means doors. So the town of Ostia there, I assume, means that it's sort of doors to Rome or something like that. Um, if you see Ostia, that's the ancient city. I don't yeah. Know, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's an ancient city that's also... In yeah. Rome. yeah. And, and well, so yeah. And, and in fact, it, what I, I mentioned, or I, I guess you signed off or signed oh, off sorry. After Maybe that, I is uh, Rome uh, they, they, is on the um, Tiber River, which, you know, and if you've ever seen the Tiber, uh, the best you can say is you're not impressed. <laughs> no, it, it's not a big river. Uh, but they used to do a lot of shipping, and, and I'm thinking here in the in the early Republic period. But um, it, it's just not big enough to handle. Uh, I mean, Rome at one time had over a million inhabitants, and there's just no way that uh, the Tiber could really supply the the uh, goods that they needed or wanted. And so eventually, the port city of Ostia uh, came about. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, 
Yeah, it, it doorway. You know, you can think How about it. gateway to. It's the gateway to Rome. Gateway. Yeah, yeah, gateway. Anyway, it became a very big port city. It had a natural port there that that worked really, really well. Well, so, is it is it a different word? Because it wouldn't be gateway if it's the same word. It would be plural. Ah, uh, let's see. Ostia, Ostia means doors, plural. Yeah, it's a. It's let's a see here. Uh, Let me do a quick check here and see if. I've always associated with it. <coughs> okay. Bless you. Uh, yeah, it was built by uh, Ancus Mark, uh, Marcius. Let's see, does this show up? Oh, oh yeah, I shared this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see that it was built by Ancus Marcius. Does it say when? Uh, uh, Ostiarum, Ostiarius. Uh, let's see what it, let's see. Well, that's real helpful. Yeah, I, yeah, I bet it is uh, a sense of doorway or door or, you know, gateway. Um, that is what I have always assumed it to mean. Um, and it certainly makes sense. And, um, Roman cities tend to be feminine. Could could you go Jesus. back to Lewis and Short there for a minute? Sure, sure. Hold on just a second. There. Okay. Uh, this is from Ost Ostiarius. I, I can bring up Ostium. Well, yeah, I was just curious because uh, in the previous chapter, they've got a macron over the O for Ostia. And there's no, it does, I'm just wondering if these two are actually entirely different words. Well, let's go back. I mean, they may be related, but. Ooh, did they put the, the, Yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah, the, the Macron. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, no, they've got the Macron over the O. Okay. Yeah, they've so, got the Macron over the O there. Yeah, that, which is the same as in the last, but. And nevertheless, it's uh, it, it's the plural, yeah, uh, of 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 ostium. Yeah, so it couldn't be gateway singular. Um. Well, okay. I I wouldn't I wouldn't translate it. I, I'm just saying that if it's exactly the same word, it has to be plural. Oh oh oh! Excuse me. No. Um. All right. That's what I was about to say. Is if you look, Roman towns generally liked to be feminine nouns. Capua, Roma, Ostia. So it's a variation. Ostia, Genua. Yeah, I think it's a variation of, of okay. Ostia. I'm just saying that it can't be the same word and, and be singular. Oh, it, right, right, right. Yeah, no, no, I would agree. Okay. Um, but yeah, I would think of it as a feminine form of gateway door, port, etc. It seems to me it would be like a proper noun because it's capitalized. Oh yeah, it is. It's it is. small o, which is, you know, yeah, like you say, a door. Yeah, so but I, I suspect they took uh, ostium and feminized it. Mm -hmm. Make it sound like a town. Yeah. From neuter to I mean, I mean, there are, now don't take that as, it has to be that way because obviously Brundisium, or sorry, Brundisium, <laughs> is uh, is uh, a neuter and then there's arminium or sorry Ar now you got me doing it arminium <laughs> arminium 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 ar 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 there we go arminium arminium ar there we go arminium okay boy hmm. I i've got arminium stuck or arminium stuck in my uh, brain here for that one i trade you for buddhism <laughs> Uh, okay, fair enough. So uh, anyway, um, let's see, where was I? Back to the, uh, so the first I, uh, yeah, to the graphics. So you can see, you know, basically there, um, and, and, and I'll send this map out uh, later. You can see they're basically laying out how of all of these roads connected. Well, 
everything. If you bought the book, it it does a pretty good job. I'm yeah. on the page by itself, which shows yeah. it off. I started yeah. looking and go, this is nuts. I can't find this. And then I, I, I opened up the book and ding. Yep. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't include that in the um, in the lesson. Um, I might mention that to them. Uh because it, uh, it, you know, just reading it, it's a little hard to visualize it. Exactly. So, um, so I, I, in fact, this is from the book. It's basically a scan. Hmm. So, but I'll send it out for those who don't hmm. have the book. So, all right. So let's see. Now we have a couple of things going on in here. We are ha we have Rope, mm -hmm. Romam near to Rome or nearby Rome or or, or mm -hmm. close to Rome. Procul, Procul ap Roma, far from Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, are there any other, oh wait, we stopped. Okay, right there, yeah. Yeah. And this is where we're gonna start seeing um, conjunctions, sorry, not conjunctions, prepositions, mm -hmm. uh, starting to take the accusative. We mm -hmm. had uh, yeah, a bunch that took the ablative, mm -hmm. like op, Roma, mm -hmm. uh, in Roma, etc. And so now we're going to start taking up some of the ones that are um, that take the accusative. And, Michael, and, yeah. well, go, go ahead, Alex. I, I'm just going to say that I like your definition of uh, prope better than the book. The book just says near, but you say near to, and that makes more sense to me. Yeah, you, you're going to have to massage uh, Roman prepositions a bit to make them fit nicely with English words. Um, they, they tended to use prepositions. Um, well, okay, if you draw the, the, the Venn diagram of prepositions, um, you'll find that they, they tend to um, have a little richer meaning than what our nearest equivalent is. So um, you, you sometimes you said have that, to... Yeah, since you said that out loud, could you change that on yours, on this page? What, near? Just say near to. Oh, well, okay. If you go, whoops, wrong. Let me pick it up over here. P-R-O-P-E, and you will find... It that does it is near to. Near, near to, nearby. And that's usually with op, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it just means near or nigh. Okay. Just as it's actually an adverb. Okay. As it sits there. Okay. So it can be near or nigh. But you see what they did in here is. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Where'd it go? Uh, Wait a minute. It's it's a it, it can be a preposition. Um, it okay. can't be an adverb, but it can right. also wait, be a wait, preposition. Wait, wait, wait. Do I have the right? Yeah, let me look at this here. If you say oh, sorry, it, okay, it is an adverb and a preposition. Sorry. That's what I was saying. I, I, <laughs> I left off, I left off a kind of an important uh, part of that sentence. Hmm. Sorry about that. And. Um, so yeah, it, it you know near and it, and by the way, the near can be both uh, geographically and it can also refer to time. Okay, so it gets um, uh, you know we would say something like the near future. So, but um, okay, so sometimes it can be near, near others near to near to nearby, yeah. Um, anyway, so. What we've seen with prepositions up till now is only with the ablative. Uh, in opido, in the town, sine dubio. 
Okay, now you haven't had Dubio, all right, but I think everybody can guess without a doubt. <laughs> and of course, we've seen Cum Sancto Spiritu. Uh, the U here, this is a um, fourth declension noun. And so it has its own unique endings. Uh, we won't worry about it yet. But if you can remember that the phrase cum sancto spiritu, that tells you that cum uses the ablative. That's actually how I remember it when I have to think about it. But now anyway, we're going to add prepositions with the accusative. So ad, meaning to, uh, uh, ad astra, to the stars. My favorite one is ad astra per aspirin to the stars with aspirin, meaning the headaches. Ante is before. Uh, apod, uh, onto. Circum, okay, well, circumnavigate as in around. So that, or, so hopefully that's familiar. Inter, between or among. So, um, you know, inter, uh, interstate intergalactic. Uh, per is through, so per Christum Dominum Nostrum, so that's an easy way to remember that one takes the accusative. Post is after, and uh, prope is uh, near, or nearby, or near to. The Michael, what would, in, what would in be, I-N? Is, is that the accusative, or? Oh, no, okay. Uh, but, it, right. it seems like it has dual meanings. That yeah, let me get to that. Okay. You're, you're, you're like one chart ahead of me. Okay. okay. Michael, Michael, Laura brought up a good question just now, saying that apud seems to be used in this text as with, but actually uh, in the companion, it doesn't define it as on two. It defines it as beside or by, like near, not on two. And in the in this in this reading, it says medus non est apu dominum. That's not medus is not onto the master. It means medus is not beside or yeah, by beside. the okay. master. Okay. All right. So let me let really me think. not on two. Yeah. Let me uh, let me answer uh, Teresa's question first, and then I'll get to Laura's. Okay. Uh, did ancient Latin use capitalization? Yes, but not in the sense of um, you're, you're asking like, would Roma be spelled with a capital R, right, Teresa? Yes. The answer there is no. Okay. Um, they had majuscules, i.e. capital letters, and those were the ones that were usually on monuments because they were pretty, they were easier. They tended to be straight line. And so they were a whole lot easier to chisel out. Uh, in uh, written documents, they tended to use minuscules or small letters, but they were, they did not have, capitalization is a, is a relatively modern development. Okay, I was wondering because I know that they didn't used to have any the punctuation, and so I thought. Yeah, okay. they didn't even put spaces between words, depending yeah. on how far back you go. Okay. Yeah. All now, right. Okay, Thanks. let's get to a pod. Uh, all right. Seems to be neither D. D. Okay, this is one of those. Okay. <sighs> all right. Up on. Actually, let me see if this one's any better. All right, let's see if I have another dictionary here with bigger. Let's see here. All right. Let me add this one to the share. Whoops, 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 put that back. Hold on. New share. And I'm going to add that. Whoops, okay, disappeared there. All right, this is a little easier to read. The reason I want to use this one instead of this one is, as you can see, 
there is a lot to this particular <laughs> preposition, okay? And I did not want to try and wade through all of those. So let's use a slightly condensed version. Okay, it can be at, near, by, with. Uh, oh, okay, maybe I won't use this one. Okay, let me um, go back to this one. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep. Onto or unto. Okay. With a verb. But also with, at, by, or near. Okay. Or beside. Or beside, yes. Because the, uh, the companion uses the word beside. Yeah. yeah. That works. I'll tell you what, let me add that definition at the end. That, because that, frankly, is what they're, that, that's what, the, it's either with or beside the way it's used in this story. Yeah. Well, with, okay, uh, this is where you got to be a little bit careful. Um, with, okay, is, um, Okay, upon is a, what's the word I want? Kind of a geographical, I mean, it's positional, okay. I didn't get that, Whoop. could you try again? Uh, upon is, is positional, whereas cum is just a general, um, uh, you know, I had wine with dinner. It, it's a more general term. It doesn't necessarily indicate position, whereas a pod does. And so when we say, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Davus was with Julius, there's an implicit in English, meaning they were together. And you, you could use cum in that case. You can certainly use it, but a pod is more of a, uh, a little more location. Michael, would it be would it be like the van the vandals are coming in to invade Rome, and you'd use that? <laughs> no, there you use run away, run away. Um, no, no, no. I know, but, <laughs> but um, you could you know the, the, how do you say vandals in um, uh, uh, Latin? Uh, the vandals are. Right upon Rome. They're coming, they're getting, they're near coming upon to attack. Well, near would be a prope. A pud is actually there, <laughs> next to, beside. Well, you, you're saying it also shows motion. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. All right. Let, let's, let's stick with that. But anyway, is there any questions there so far? Okay. I just dropped a couple in the chat. Oh, there we go. Oh, man, you know, I spell checked that too. How did I miss that one? Hmm. Well, I'm using the old English spelling. <laughs> <laughs> you can get away with just about anything if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I actually picked up a book in English written around the time of of uh, Henry the eighth and um now I've uh, now I've read Shakespeare okay Shakespeare is not easy to read in the sense of the the, the language is kind of archaic but um so um but you you know it's still you know when you read it they've they've regularized the spelling to modern standards but you, I picked up this book from about Henry VIII's time, and I had a devil of a time reading it because the word the was spelled T-H-E, T-H-E-E. -E. I mean, it, even the spelling of the word changed throughout the text of the book. <laughs> so <clears throat> anyway. I actually caught a video recently of a guy who specialized in, in Old English. 
Yeah. And he had some other language people, you know, and he was quizzing them. He read a passage and they're supposed to guess what he was talking about. And he went off and, and he, he read it first and then he had put the text up and he read the text. And I'm like, Holy crap, it was a whole different language. I didn't recognize any of it hardly at all. Yeah, even even Shakespeare, if they read it in the original pronunciation, is a bit strange in places. I just remember uh, thinking, how do we get here from there? <laughs> so, um Facebook. <laughs> a long and torturous road. Okay, yeah, sorry. See. All right. Um yes, okay. Uh, and Laura asked, verbum errata put deum, yes, in designating nearness in respect of persons, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, it can mean with in the sense of, I, I mean, it can be translated as with, but it's usually um, um, uh, positional as opposed to um, uh, cum is more... Um, generic so anyway well it sounds like what you're saying is that it's more it, it 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 means with but in a very specific way yes yes that's what i'm trying to say thank you anyway the distinction between the ablative and the accusative now again this is this is a bit subtle the ablative indicates presence and or motion away uh, sorry away from or from motion from or motion away. So, um, you know, you saw that with op est, meaning away, not here. Um, it also can indicate presence because we said, um, you know, Roma in Italia est, mm -hmm. so that's, that's presence. Uh, the accusative generally indicates the final destination, meaning at, and motion towards. Uh, let me explain some of those because it's it's a little more it's a little more. Uh, there, there, both can mean a presence, okay? But how that presence came about? If you remember in the creed, we said sedes ad dexteram dei patris. Uh, who sits at the right hand of the Father, ad dextaram. Okay. Um, the whole phrase there is, uh, you know, that Christ ascended and it is seated at the right hand of the Father. So he ascended, okay, towards the Father, and he is now seated next to the Father. So that ad there is the final destination, okay? So don't think of it solely as the motion has to be current, but rather the result of the motion. Am I making sense here? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what do we have here? Um, in opido, in the city. Op opido, away from the city. So there's presence, there's motion away. In opidum means into the city. Okay. You're not passively in the city, but you are actually into the city. You are going into the city. Um, and this would indicate, you know, you're at the uh, the porta there, or, or sorry, the, um, yeah, the porta or the uh, ostium is, is, you know, you literally are entering the city at that point. Mm -hmm. Ad opidum is to or towards the city. Okay. Anyway, we need to we're, we'll we'll study the new ones in chapter six because once you open up both the ablative and the accusative, you you have to kind of keep in mind a bit um, what they are uh, what they are hinting at, uh, or you can just straight memorize them. That works too. Up to you. Let's see. I think the next one, yeah, is the ablative. Oh uh, no, I, yeah. One of the things. Uh, well, I'll. I'll cover it now, is something called the um, ablativus separationis, is the ablative of separation. Um, motion to or from a town. Oh, no, we'll get to that later. 
let's let's do that later. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, oh, actually, oh yes. All right, so via Latina non tam longa est quam via apia. The via Latina is not as much as long as that the, of the via uh, apia. Now I put an of in there. I don't want to do that. Uh, long uh, tam is uh, means so much as, so much so. Let, let's bring, uh, now this one is probably a good one to use here. T-A-M, there we go. So, so far to such agree as much as, okay? Mm -hmm. It's um, it's an all-purpose word. In fact, oh, I'll bring it. Tell you what, I'll bring up. Um, I'll bring up uh, Scriba. Oops, come on, Scriba. There you go. Because if you again, you look at if you look these prepositions up, you know, they have a lot of different senses, and to a certain extent, English does this too. Is so. All I'm saying is, is just be a bit careful as to how you. Um, map those 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 prepositions you need to make sure your latin uh conception of the preposition includes some of its meanings which you wouldn't normally assign to the closest equivalent or um, um word anyway tom so so much as to the same degree as uh etc uh so uh, the via latina is not so much as long as that quam via apia. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see, is Tom, Tom okay, Tom um, to mean as much X as Y? Yes, yes, to uh, Laura's question. Yeah, and the non there, uh, the, the, sorry, the non means not as much as. Okay, uh, let's see here. I think that's everything for that for the moment. Yeah. Are there any questions so far? And of course, longus, long, distant, far. Okay, or actually just long. Well, I had a question, but it was about the homework, so. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, for uh, chapter six? Yeah. Oh, okay. I haven't, I saw yours pop up. I haven't graded it yet. Yeah, sorry. Okay. I did like, I did like three weeks worth all in one afternoon. Uh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> well, you, you, I hope you had a very enjoyable time at your um, conference. Oh, yeah, I did. I did for sure. It was great. And you probably came home from, to, to Houston and said, ah, I came home to this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, Michael said we didn't have homework for this week because we were just reviewing. So I was expecting to do one week's worth, not three weeks, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> uh, no, I yeah. meant the heat, but anyway. Oh, man. Okay, uh, let's see. All right. Anybody want to take the next section, unless there's any questions on the first? I can take it. Thank you. Yes, I'll please. Start with circum opida muri sunt. Okay, around the towns uh, are walls. Right. Uh, around Rome is an old. I'll read wall. the Latin first, then do the English. Sorry. <laughs> circum opida muri sunt. Right. Uh, around towns, around the towns are walls. Circum Roman est murus antiquus. Uh, around Rome is an antique or old wall. In uh, let me make a minor tweak. Circum. Circum, sorry. C in circum. front of the I is uh, soft. Bad habit. Uh, yeah, thank I you. Know. <laughs> in, I know. I know. We all want to say circum, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I tend to circumlocute when I say circum. Uh, uh, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, in muro romano duo decim. Uh, uh, in 
the Roman wall, uh, there are 12 gates. Mm -hmm. Porta prima romana est porta capena. Mm -hmm. uh, the first Roman gate is the gate is capena. Circum opidum tusculum muros non tam longus est quam circum roman. The uh, the tusculum wall is not as much as long as that uh, around Rome. Yeah, yeah. I guess the only thing I would comment there is is uh, I understand what you're trying to do there is is map each word. But we probably would just say the it's not as long as the wall around. It's Rome. not as long as the wall is the Roman wall. That's how I've been saying it. Yeah. So, but anyway. And then. Uh, oh. oh wow, that's it. Oh, you got it. Like, you got off easy. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Michael Not took the hard one. I didn't realize. I thought this was a longer. Well, we might give the next one to uh, to Alex. Um, Please. Okay. But. But yeah, circum, circum around. Uh, you know, we we have circumnavigate, uh, circumlocution, um, circumcision. I mean, there's there's a number of words with that uh, root in it. Michael, why is it opida in that opidum? Circum opidum because. Oh. Of Go ahead. Uh, okay, literally around towns are walls what they're what they're saying is is most well i, I would say just about all towns uh in rome uh, not rome <laughs> in, in the um empire empire right yeah uh or even even not in the empire were had walls right um, you had the walls of jerusalem mm -hmm. for example uh, and that was for defensive measures. Um, you know, the um, the um, non-urban areas, well, two reasons, uh, invading armies uh, or invading Mars, uh, um, sorry, invading um, mobs, you know, et cetera were a, uh, a, a safety threat. And so those walls were there to protect the citizens. And so, yeah, this is plural. Yeah, opida, opidum. Yeah. So and, uh, is circ, circum, circum, circum. Is, 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 a, is what, a noun, an adjective? No, that's a uh, preposition and it takes the accusative. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, circum is a is a preposition, and it takes the accusative. Now, opida. The the nominative form is opidum. The plural right. form is opida, and right. if you remember my charts from last week, for the neuter Kate for the neuter nouns, the nominative and the accusative are identical. So this this is in the accusative. It just it also plural accusative. And yeah, because it's sunk. It's yeah, yeah. So yeah. so um, well, no. This is this is uh, it's sunt because of the uh, Mary because of the wall. Right, the walls, right, so the walls are around towns. Got it. Might be a better way of untangling that. Yeah. Uh, now we come to the Roman. So around Rome is an ancient wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, they, they all had, they pretty much all had walls or they didn't last very long. I mean, maybe even, even very small towns might have uh, what we would consider uh, like a fort, you know, wooden palisade mm -hmm. around it. That was fortification. Um, fortification. <laughs> fortification. Fortification. Right. I should be a senator, huh? <laughs> Fortifications. Yeah, that's pretty much. And even they, when the uh, Roman legions went out and camped uh, on, uh, you know, when they were doing um, 
uh, on campaign, uh, that's one of the first things that the Romans would build would be a wall around the camp for defensive purposes. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, well, I don't know if we'll, we probably won't get to that. I, I, I need to read farther ahead and find out if we have any uh, Roman uh, armies marching about. Uh, let's see, I don't think there's anything else that is terribly unique about this. Okay, let's, unless there's a question, I'll go to the next section. You want me to continue? Yeah, uh, yeah, since you got, you, since you got off so easily. Got off so easily. Villa Ulii est prope Tusculum. So the house of Julius is near to Tusculum. Ab opido tusculo ad villam Julii non longa via est um, from the Tusculo town to the vill villa of Julius is not a long road. Yeah. Ece hmm. Julius et quator servi in via. Uh, behold, or look at Julius and the four servants in the road. Julius ab opido ad villam suam it. Um, Julius goes from the town to his villa. Dominus et servi ab opido ad villam eunt. Uh, the master and the servants, plural, go from the town to the villa. Dominus in Laetica est. The master is in, is, is in the litter. Duo hmm. servi lecticam cum domino portant. Two servants carry the uh, litter with the master. Servi qui lecticam portant sunt ursus et davus. The servants um, who carry the lectica are ursus and davus. Yeah. Okay, hold up just a second here. Let's pause for just I'd a moment. I say lecticam, I meant to say litter. Yeah, litter. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Laura comments that um, he looks a little crabby there. Let me let's see if we can move in a little bit. I didn't really. Whoops, I didn't really notice that. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a uh, whoop, kind of a look. Whoop, let's see here. There we go. Um, okay, Michael. This... He, when 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 Alex was reading. Um, uh, where uh, where it talks about the servants are in in the road in via isn't it on the road? Oh, let's see. Uh, third line down. Third. First three words: survey in via, in via, in via. No, before that, just before that. Okay. Oh. Okay. Word in. Isn't that, shouldn't that be, he said they're in the road. All right. This is where in, this is why I warn you that. That's what I asked you about earlier. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's find our prepositions here. See, I can see in the city makes sense, but you're not in a road, you're on a well, road. Well, oh, no, no. Um, okay. If um, I drove my car. You drove the car. Onto the street. Right. I am driving my car in the street, right? Well, I got to think about that one. Yeah. See this. This is where prepositions are. I, I was. I was. I was kind of warning you. <laughs> yeah. Um, now you can look at this two ways. In can mean on. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, you could think of it as in the roadway. Or in the roadway. Yeah. Well, let me uh, let me give you an example. Um, Well, actually, let me give you another example. Okay. Uh, well, if it were into the street, then it would be accusative, Laura. So, uh, so in this case, we also say the ship is on the sea. Right. We can also say the ship is in the sea. 
because the sea is is a very you know or in a lake you know the boat is in right. the lake. So, so then, in other words, it's using it as location. Yes, yes. In both cases, it's location. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can either think of that is uh, if if you want to say on the road, you'd say in via. If you wanted to say in the road, like or in the street, you would say in via. So it's uh, you said the same thing, right? Really in makes via. sound. Yeah, it's the same thing. You in fact, okay. if you wanted to say it one way or the other, it would still come out the same way in Latin. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. But either way would be correct if if you were to. Um, yeah, if you were if you were translating this into English, uh, you could say um, uh, on the road or in the road. I notice Alex. Is really we tend to say, and and this is a quirk of English. We tend to say on the road and in the street. We yeah. don't say. <laughs> well, yeah, we can't say the street, but we're on the road. Yeah, right. I mean, you can say it that way, but it's usually we say you are on the road or in the street. So, or at least I do anyway. But it means the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. And here we have a good example of the ablative versus the accusative. Julius ap opido ad vilam suam it. And, and as Alex pointed out, Julius, it is going from the town to his villa. Uh, we'll find that the, the verb to go is like one of the shortest. <laughs> what uh, conjugation is that? Um, it's irregular, but it is the 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 um, the uh, infinitive is literally I R E. If you look it up here, let wow. me. Uh, yeah, here we go. I R E. Oh, actually, let let me put in it. And let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, darn it. All right, hold on. Let me put in AO. That's right. This this wants um yeah, here's the conjugation. Yeah, it's um it's an irregular verb, but it sort of follows the IRE pattern. So but first person singular is AO. So the only ones you need to worry about at the moment are it and aunt for the moment. So, yeah. um, mm. so yeah. does it not belong to any particular conjugation? It, it's irregular. I mean, there's, there's, I, uh, okay. okay. If, I, I see what you're saying. That yeah. If you go when back, when, this when looks a lot like um, uh, the fourth conjugation. Okay. So if you remember audio, yeah. Uh, but audibo, uh, audibam, audivi for the perfect. And um, let's see what else can we scroll down here. And some of these other forms, which some of you guys haven't had it. It's closer to an IRE verb. But you know, AO. I thought an I R E was an ending for a verb. Uh, as I said, it's the shortest verb you'll get. But that in and of itself is a verb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I R E okay. is to go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, here. In fact, let me. Yeah, let's uh, scroll all the way down. See, there's the infinitive I R E. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. It. 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 How do you pronounce that? Ire. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All this time I've been living next to Lake Erie. <laughs> I thought oh, it was you were in California. <laughs> well, I'm from originally Cleveland. Oh, really? Yes, sir. I li used to live in Tiffin and Finley, other side. Oh, of wow. You did? Yep. Oh, nice, nice areas. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful back here. Oh, oh, my dad's from Ohio, too. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Cool. Anyway. Uh, where was I? So, oh, there was. A I thing. didn't. I didn't realize the proximity uh, between that and Spanish because "ir" "ir" means to go in Spanish. Yeah. Hmm. So it's just you just add the e. That's much like Italian. So many of the Italian words 
just add an E uh, to infinitives in Spanish. Like venir uh, uh, is venire in yep. Italian. Which is exactly to go in Latin. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so anyway, here we see the ablative, um, meaning going away, and the accusative going towards. Uh, lectica is a litter. Mm -hmm. um, the reason he probably has a rather uh, dour face is um, it's better than walking. <laughs> 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 but you got to see, okay, now this one is uh, a relatively small one. And so it's being carried by, by two slaves. And so I hope they're in step and synchronized with one. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be kind of a, you know. It looks like they're out of step. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So um, usually uh, if they wanted a, um, um, and by the way, uh, lecti or, or lect um, lecticum, or uh, sorry, not ah. lectica. Yeah, hold on. Let me let me get the lectum is a uh, sorry lectus. Excuse me. Let me get the right ending. Is a couch or a bed. Uh, in particular, a, a bridal bed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also the couch for reclining at meals, okay? An eating couch. So, you know, uh, Romans and many of the Mediterranean cultures reclined at table on a, a, a bed of such. And um, uh, so this is, this is considered, a lectica is like a little bed or a little couch. Of course, in this case, he's sitting. And um, uh, as I said, it's probably better than walking. Um, I'm sure the servants would prefer to be inside than, than carrying it. Uh, I was rather amused by the, the name of this. Let's see, did we get to Ursus yet? Uh, yeah, yeah Urs, Ursus in Latin means bear. Bear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you recall, oh, Ursus. yeah, if you recall the uh, constellation, Ursus major or ursus major sorry in english or ursus major is the big bear mm -hmm. uh, for which the big dipper is part of it mm -hmm. and then um ursus uh minor minor is uh the little bear um uh well actually jen that later on the the women well of course uh the, the women did uh often uh recline at uh table it depended on um number of things but you're right early on in the early republic they they would have not um they would have sat in a chair oh let's see where was i okay where'd we end off so oh, one other thing i was gonna uh, speaking of amusing things that the companion actually defines lectica as um litter but it also defines it as sedan and yeah. I, that oh seems, yeah, you know, sedan that, would probably be better. Here. That seems a little over the top. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, not not the uh, not the sedan that's uh, down at uh, the uh, Detroit at, at the at the car lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the old version, the old word, the old version of the word sedan. Yeah. Hmm. Oh well. Anyway, where were? Let's see. We Julius non in via ambulat servi eum portant. So Julius is not walking in the street. The servants are carrying him. Theorus, is that how you pronounce that? Yes, yeah, Theorus. Theorus et Sirius. Leander, ambulant. Theorus and Leander are walking. Theorus sacum portat et Leander, quoque sacum portat, Cyrus is carrying a sack, and Leander is also carrying a sack. Cyrus et Leander duo sacos and umeris portant. Cyrus and Leander are carrying two sacks on their shoulders. Yeah, hold on just a second. Let me go back and answer Ginny's uh, question. Uh, let's see. The servants who 
are carrying the litter are Ursus and Davus. Oh, I see. Wasn't that a carrying chair? Uh, yeah, you can call a uh, lecticum either a carrying chair, meaning sedan, or a sedan. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. You're asking. Oh, you're answering what a sedan was. Yes. Yeah, yes. I think it was a carrying chair or a litter. Either yes. one. Yes. Yes. Okay. Where were we? Uh, let's see. I think we just ended there, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Resume there. Saki quos cirrus at Leander portant mani sud. Uh, said sacus quem cirrus portat non tam manus est quam sacus leandri. Yeah. So uh, the, the sacks that cirrus and leander are carrying are large, but the sack uh, that cirrus is carrying is not as large as it's hard to read. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Can, can I'm just in? showing you the, the picture there. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> It's not as large as the sack of Leander. Yeah. By the way, Leander is like Ager uh, in, in that uh, it's that third, uh, it's that second conjugation masculine that moves from the A G E R and drops the E to form Leandri. Yes. I, I hope you don't mind the editorial. No, that's fine. Quator servi dominum et duo sacos ab opido ad villam vehunt. Um, the four servants are carrying the master and the two sacks from the town to the villa. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Now let's take a brief look at vehunt. They uh, on the side they they are telling you that Vehunt uh, is, I guess, roughly the same. Yeah, in this case, I would say yes. That's how you would translate that. But but there is uh, that's why I wanted to stop on this one just for the heck of it. Um, to bear, to carry, convey. It usually. Um, uh, In the companion, yeah, I, I guess I yeah. I, in in the uh, it, you you usually see it in the sense of conveying uh, or taking something somewhere. Uh, and I I you know granted Porto Portat Portant is is pretty close to that. This but, is I'm, I'm curious. Does is Vehunt more typically used with something or some? Like an animal, see, they say wagon and horse, ship. Is yeah. It, is it less used when you're talking about a person carrying? I mean, in this case, they're using it when you're talking about a person carrying, but. I honestly don't know. Uh, I've never really thought about it. Um, it it's usually. Um, You know, you could say Julia Rosas Portat. Julia is carrying roses. And that's kind of a general carrying. But um, um, uh, Vehunt usually means a carrying somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It, it's it's um, you would you you would probably use this more often if they were carrying it some distance. I guess is is about the best way to say that. I'm um, just curious of whether yeah. whether your experience with this is that if people are carrying, they would more often use portant than vehunt. Oh, dear. No, I, I really, I haven't, I haven't noticed one way or the other. Do they not mean it's a vehicle that they're carrying? No, oh, no, no, no. Okay, vehunt means they're it's carrying. the verb. Vehunt means to carry. Yeah, I, right I, now, I, right now, vehunt means carry. Okay, <laughs> in this sense, 
or mm -hmm. convey. Mm -hmm. Okay, as in um, sharing the master and the two yeah. selves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. All right, let's see. Is there any? Oh, we're coming up on. Let me do a fast check here. So, there is a difference between carrying, as in lifting him bodily and throwing him over the parapet, as opposed <laughs> to conveying him from one location to another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm trying to say there is I usually seen it in the sense of you are conveying between point A to point B. Whereas portant is is a more ju just means carrying, you know. So, uh, okay, they, they're almost interchangeable. Let me put it this way: they're almost interchangeable. The difference is pretty small. What sounds like behunt is more specific. Yeah, it seems like it would show motion, maybe. Yeah, that yeah, behunt would be showing carry with motion with the carrying. Right. Significant the other one is just carrying. You yeah, just hold just carrying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, if, uh, yeah, you saw Julia standing in the uh, um, garden mm -hmm. holding roses. Yes. Yeah. You could say Julia, uh, you know, uh, well, Julia in Horto uh, Rosas uh, Portat. Right. And there's no implication of what. Yeah, there's no movement, no nothing. She's just, yeah. it's just a statement of fact. She's just holding roses. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, let's see. What do we got? We got about 15 minutes left. Um, let me do a quick look through here. Let's see. I talked about that. There was one you were going to hold off on and come back to. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, no, we haven't gotten there yet. So mm -hmm. never mind. We're not going to. Uh, I want to make sure I wasn't uh, get. Uh, I wanted to keep the text synchronized with the charts. Mm -hmm. All okay. right. So the next one. Any takers? This one isn't so bad. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Okay, I'm struggling with a knee issue right at the moment, so bear with me. Yeah, I'd take some of these, but I can't read them. <laughs> so I had eye surgery. Yeah, yeah, she had some eye surgery. Yeah, I'm not going to ask. I, I normally I would uh, put her on the spot, but not in this case. I, I know what uh, <laughs> she had something called dermabrasion uh, on on her eye. Um, the, the cornea gets kind of wrinkly, and the, it's really easy to fix. You just zap the the. Yeah, you take center. a spinning diamond tipped sandpaper and they whirl it and they rub <laughs> it over your cornea. It's rather terrifying, but it worked. Uh -huh. Yeah, with lots of value, <laughs> you might add. <sighs> anyway. Easy. Yeah, well, it's it's like, uh, has anybody had uh, cataracts? Have you had cataract surgery, Michael? I've had uh, where they removed the lens because they were all scratched and looked like I was looking through a dirty, foggy window. Yeah, and then they replaced the lens, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's kind of like, wow. I, I can see like I, I was eighteen again. I don't need glasses for anything. Yeah, yeah, same idea, same thing. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's a different procedure, but they you right. do it, you know, while you're conscious. Sounds scary, but I tell you, they. Oh yeah, but they they give you enough good stuff that you don't mind. Oh, they kept every five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> before they even went into surgery. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's continue. All right, go ahead, Nina. Oh yeah, Teresa, go ahead. Okay. Julius electrica est inter usum et davum. So Julius is in the litter between usum and davum. Yes. Ursus est ante Iulium, davus post aeum est. So Ursus is behind Julius and Davos is, I'm sorry, is before Julius, Davos is behind him. Right. Cyrus et Leander non ante lecticum, said post lecticum ambulant. So the other two guys are walking behind the letter. Right. ne e Julius Avila. Okay, now I'm getting, I'm drawing like brain fart moments here. So is Julius going, is it to the villa, to his villa? Nope. No. So away from his villa. Yes. Okay. 
So is Julius going away from Philly? No one, I well, well hold on, hold on. Let, let's work hard. on that a little more. Michael, okay. Michael yes. this is where you've got to talk about what's going on here. Yes, yes exactly, please. Yes. Let's let's drill down on that one. Okay. Vain it. What does vain it mean? Vain it means. Jeez. Oh, is he coming? Is he or does he? Yes. Come? Okay. Is he coming from the from villa? villa? Like Vania. Right. Yes. I'm drawing a blank on the uh, 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 odd in the manual. Yeah, Michael, this is where you've got to talk about why it's ah and not ab. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a chart. Let's see. Did I do that? Oh, okay. No, I don't have a chart specific. I discuss that later. Yeah. Um, ah, well, let, let me put this in the... Uh, Ah, uh, op, ob. So I'm putting that in the uh, in the in the uh, chat window. All the same word, ah, uh, op, and ops. Ah uh, is invariably used in front of a noun or that is a consonant. So villa, right, or villa is a consonant. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to OBS yet eventually, uh, um, Laura. So a villa, a Roma, uh, etc. So from villa op, right now. Yeah, op is used if the if there's a if it is a, a vowel, uh, if a vowel. It is vowel. Right. So uh, later on, I think we will see a vowel here someplace. The Michael. Mm -hmm. And the exception is the letter H. Right. Oh, yeah. Right, and correct. the letter H. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now I have that in a chart later on. Anyway, okay. continue. I'm getting shooting pains in my knee right now, so I'm not focusing very well. Oh, and I lost my, hang on, lost my screen. There, there it we is. go. Okay. Okay. Non avida in it. So no, he's not coming from the villa. Yeah. Unde then it. Julius. So Unde, I'm not familiar with. I haven't had a chance to read this chapter yet. From where? So I'm guessing that's from where. Where is yeah. he going? Yes, from where? No, no, going? he's coming. He's not going. Oh, <laughs> going away. would be it or uh, Eunt. This is Venet. Venet. So he is coming. But, Unde but, Venet Julius. Unde Literally, is where one. is Julius coming from? Okay. We have to throw a from in there someplace in English. Ab abido venet. So he's coming from the town, oh, the yeah. city. Quo it Julius. So it, we said he was going to the ear. So, oh, geez, I'm sorry, my leg is really screwing with my thoughts right now. Can someone pick up for me? Sure. I'll finish it. Well, yeah, I'll finish it. Quo it Julius. Where is to where is Elias going? Ad vilam it. Post eum tusculum est ante eum est vila. Uh, behind him is Tusculum, and before him is the villa. You, but you missed ad vilam it. I thought I said that. No, well, I heard you say it in Latin. <laughs> oh, did I miss it in English? Sorry. Yes. Well, I don't need to repeat it then, right? No. He is going to the villa. Okay. Hey, Michael, you were at, you said earlier about ah, uh, it, it's used with a consonant and then ab with a vowel, the very next. Uh, the other way around. Oh, okay. Well, they, ah they, is used with a cons. Oh, there it is. I knew there. Right, that's what I was going to tell you. That's what I was trying to there say. There it is. Yeah. Op. Yeah. See, here is. Ab the, yeah. Here is uh, the consonant, and there there is the vowel. So the vowel, yeah, no, 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 no. For, um, yeah right. so they are the Got same it. word, and there is even an ops with an abs. Uh, for the moment, we'll just it. It's really a vi version of of uh, ob, <laughs> the ab. 
Uh, we'll we'll talk about it later, but for now it's ah and op. And if you see ops, then just think op. All right. So now we're gonna get, we got, now we're oh, gonna we get five into five minutes food. yet. Um okay, let me think about this here. Where are we? Okay. Um, no, we really haven't gotten to the text for some of this later stuff. So we'll we'll push we'll push this off till later. Um, well, we'll continue reading. Uh, let's see. This is a fairly long one. Any volunteers? Actually, it's all the way to the end. <laughs> I'll try. Okay, go for it. Julius. Solus non est, nam quater servi apud eum sunt. Julius is not alone. Um, he's with um, four servants. This is going going with him. Uh, or or a, near him, nearby him, or you can use nearby one. him. Yeah. Medus yeah. non est apud dominum, nam is dominum eratum timid. So Medus is not you know, going near uh, the- I would just say use the with here, okay. Okay, Medus is not with the Lord or with the master. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, master, he may be now. <laughs> he's, he is afraid, <laughs> it's true. Uh, he is afraid of the angry master. Right. Medus est malus servus qui numus domini in saculum su habit. The Medus is the bad servant, or I guess wicked servant, mm -hmm. who has um, the master's money in his sack. Coins. Coins has the master's yeah, numos, coins. In his sack. Yeah, uh, numos would be coins. Money is pecunia. Ah, uh, okay. Dominus servos malus baculu verborat. It as a ita que servi male dominum et baculum eus timens. So uh, the master beats uh, bad servants with a stick. Yep. The, um, let's see. It's, let's see. Itaque, remind me, itaque is. Let's see. Itaque. He, so. So. So he. Beats no, it's a, the the bad servants are afraid of the Lord and his stick. Right. Davus autum bonus servus est. Davus is a good servant. Yeah, I Neque, would use the however. Or, how, okay, Davus, however, is a good servant. Neque is madum amen. Um, he does not like medus. Davus. Yeah. Uh, Micus medi non est. Yeah. Davus is not Medus's friend. Nam servus bonus et servus malus non amici. So good servants and bad friends, servants are not friends, said in amici. But oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, let's be careful about that. Say that again. Okay, so a good servant and a bad servant are not friends. I believe you used the plural. I heard plural. Right, That's right. No, I, I did, but I'm I'm correcting myself now. So I just realized it is singular. Um, said enemici sunt. Yeah, let me but let me our enemies. That a bit. Okay, just a little. Sure. Okay, so Davos is not a friend of Medus, genitive there. Okay. For the good servant is not. A friend of the bad. A friend. Well, the, okay. Oh, friends. Sorry. Right. For the good servant and the bad servant are not friends, right. uh, but are enemies. Continue. Medus est enemicus dabi. Medus is the enemy of Davus. Yep. Ursus autum amicus dabi est. Uh, for outem, out yeah, outem, outem. Somebody, so, somebody Earth. drops something on your foot. What do you say? Uh, I, I hope it's out. It. <laughs> Might be so other. Earth, see, Ursus 
or for Ursus is the friend of Davos? Yeah. Altem or however, is, like however. Altem, okay, so however. Altem is a all-purpose conjunction hmm. that takes things. Uh, it, it's um. What's the word I want for it? It it changes the 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 course here. Like, I mean, so if we say A, B, and C, however D, the the point of the however is to say that the pattern is different than the previous words. There's a word for that, and I can't think of what it is. So yeah, it's important to um, see. Medus is an enemy of Davos. However, Ursus is a friend of Davos. See what so I'm saying? So there's a they're trying to contrast. Yeah, they're they're contrasting. That's yeah. the word. Contrasting. It couldn't be what? Michael. Yeah. On the on the side, it, it notice that it says Altum equals said, and then Davos Altum equals said Davos. So, uh, in addition to using the word however, it looks like the way you would translate Ursus Altum is not Ursum but, but the reverse. You would say, but Ursus Correct. is a friend of Davos. B you could certainly it. say it that way. Well, that's, uh, what the book, that's what the book is telling you on that side. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, not, yeah, I, I, I think however makes more sense, but the book is telling you that's well, the way. But, but and however are both contrasting. Yeah. But they're just saying that you reverse the two words to get the meaning. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. But yeah, that'll work. If you look up, um, well, I'll be brave here. <laughs> A U T E M. Uh, yeah, uh, on the other, whoop. Ooh, I didn't know I could zoom in like that. That's nice. Now uh -huh. you guys can read that, right? <laughs> uh -huh. On the other hand, but yet, however, nevertheless, um, let's see, how did I do that? Uh, okay, now I can't do it again, darn it. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, what, what did I do? Hit the green button. Uh, I don't have a green button. <laughs> Up on top. Oh, that, that just makes the window bigger. It, it won't help. Oh, interesting. I'll take your fingers across the pad and separate. Yeah, it's, it's like um, that's weird. Oh, I know. Maybe. Oh well, I'll, I'll practice it with my mouse later. You're right. On an iPad, it, you just use the 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 spread of the fingers, and right. there's apparently a way to do that here. I'll have to. Whoop! I'll have to practice. Okay. Oh well. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, I like, uh, yeah, Altem is a, um, the, the reason I like, uh, the reason I used however is, is, um, is I didn't want you to think it's an, the, the, the danger here is uh, you may think as said and Altem as synonyms, and that's not quite true. Uh, said is not a however. Said is always a but. And altem is used um, to contrast more, as I said, nevertheless, however, etc. But not that but is bad by any means. All right, we are at nine o'clock. So we've just finished part one. Yeah, we just finished part one. Okay. Oh, all right. Actually, no, we're about right for, um, yeah, okay. We're about, yeah, we, we really are on about chapter, or rather slide seven of, um, of the notes. Um, we'll continue on next time where we pick up um, the uh, abla ablative of separation and then something as which is called the locative. Uh, we never got to that in the... Um, um, in the class with Collins, um, but briefly, um, usually when you want to indicate someone or something is in, then you use in plus the ablative. So Roma in Italia est, 
Emilia in Horto Est. Okay, we've seen all of those. Mm -hmm. But in towns, when referring to towns, then you believe it or not, you use the genitive form. Uh, or if you prefer the locative form, which happens to have the same ending as the genitive form, take your pick how you want to think of that, then the town's name is used, uh, or the, rather that form of the town's name is used instead. So Julius, you would not say in Tusculo est, but you would say Julius Tusculi est. Okay. Vaticanus. You do not say Vaticanus, the Vatican, in Roma est. You say Vaticanus Rome est. And this is called the locative. Okay. This is just. Michael, how would you translate either one of those sentences? Uh, well, you can. Uh, well, no, you would say uh, Julius is in uh, Tuscany, uh, Tusculum. Uh, uh, is it in Tuscany or from Tuscany? Well, not Tuscany. Tuscany is not Tusculum. Tuscany oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I had a, my cursor was over that. Yeah, no, Tuscany is a different part of Italy. No, no, yeah, okay, yeah, uh, I get it, but. But uh, no, you would just say Julius uh, is in Tusculum. That's it. I thought, well, when referring to towns from or to the genitive form is used instead. Yeah. So I, I said Julius is from. Tuscally, Tuscalo. No? Um, oh, oh, I mangled this chart, this, didn't I? This is, this is Julius is in. Yeah, let's see here. There. Well, okay. Um, let's see. Do I go to the second one? No. All right. I, I will clean that up for next time. Michael. Yeah. Is, is it fair to say, if I understand what's going on here, is it fair to say that it would not be appropriate to say Julius Opidi est? Because it has to be a specific. It has to be. A, yeah. It has to be a proper name. Yeah. Not names in general, but. A yeah. Name and in fact, there is a sentence you will see. I, I think it was in the, either the homework or the text. Julius in Oppido Tusculo. Now, in that case, Tusculum needs to be an ablative because it's it's like an adjective modifying Oppido. Mm -hmm. And in you know, so you say in Oppido in the town. Mm -hmm. uh, so you then make uh, Tusculo, you know, ablative as well to make sure it all matches up right. Uh, we'll cover that some more. I'll, I'll clean this up a little bit. I think I, uh, I think I left a slide out. Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Uh, there is supposed to be the rest of the locative. Oh, okay. I left some stuff out. Well, I'll clean that up. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to get to the active and passive voice. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, the ablative of instrument. Ablativus instrumenti. Uh, we'll get to that as well. But I, it, it's time to, to um, sign off. But, yeah, Michael, uh, uh, yeah, we got I, about halfway through here. Yeah. I, I just had one question. Uh, just one of these words that looks like another word okay um, in, in one of the words that we covered here was for shoulder was humerus humerus yes and i was wondering you know humerus is the bone just below the shoulder right mm. i wonder if they're if the if they're they're two they're related it the only difference is an h the humerus with an h is the bone where your bicep is that it extends down from the shoulder right this would be the humerus right here right correct mm -hmm. so i they have to be related um yeah the um and by the way that's not the latin word for arm <laughs> yeah when the uh uh when medicine or anatomy um 
became a uh, more of a formalized science. And that was a long time ago. Um, they basically took the Latin names or something uh, similar to the Latin names or something that um, resembled the, the particular item. Uh, and so, um, uh, yeah, they, they basically took uh, humerus as, as the, uh, the upper arm bone. Well, I guess it would be fair to say that the, connected to the, that the, the word humorous is derived from humorous. Yes, yes, but it is not actually a lat. It is not a uh, actual Latin word. If we put in humorous, you find see that nope, not there. <laughs> it's not there. So they they basically took humorous and stuck in a and. Again, well, there also be keep in mind that H's were in some parts of uh, Europe, H's were silent. We, we have a little bit of uh, leftover for that. We say honor. We don't say honor. Um, so, uh, but yeah. And it, it's also, by the way, it's not just the shoulder, but it's it's the upper part of the arm. Oh. Okay. And the shoulder, so that um, would that would cover that bone. Yeah, it, it it would be the shoulder and the upper part of the arm. So let's say from the elbow to the, not quite to the base of the neck. That'd be a little too much. Well, that that is the humerus bone. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, I was wondering. Upper arm. Yes. I was wondering just briefly um, when we were talking about going and coming, you know, to and from. Uh -huh. uh, if, we're, if, anybody, if everybody's old enough to remember the movie Quo Vadis, oh. I think that means, where are you going? That would be second person, I think. Yeah, it's second person singular. So um, are there different words for to go or to walk or to travel. This is more like a travel word. Um, uh, oh dear. Yeah. yeah, that have different shades of meaning. Meaning. Yeah, vado. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it in there. It means to go, to walk, but especially to go quickly or to rush. Okay. And oh. if you recall, uh, the movie uh, is when um, takes place when Peter is hot footing it out of Rome. Uh, oh, yes, Nero. Is, Nero is burning Christians left and right. And in fact, um, Nero basically right. blamed, and he goes back. Yeah, the the fire, the great fire of Rome in what was it, sixty nine A.D. I think. Somewhere in there. Yeah, right around then. Right around there. Um, on, or maybe it was, no, maybe it was 66 AD. Well, anyway, uh, he blamed the fire on the Christians. Um, and so uh, it became very popular for Nero to um, execute them. And in fact, where the Colosseum is currently located used to be Nero's garden. And so he held a garden party one night where he had, and I don't recall the number of Christians. It was, I want to say a hundred, but don't quote me on that. It was a significant number. They were crucified. Oil was poured over them and then they were burned. Yeah, it was pitch. Pitch, yeah. thank you. Yeah, pitch. Yeah, petroleum. I knew it was a petroleum product. And that is about as grisly. I mean, can you imagine having a dinner party while you know all these people are up on crosses burning? I mean, wow. Um, no, thank you. Anyway, so Peter uh, justifiably was hot footing it out of uh, of uh, of Rome, and so you know, so the the hasty <laughs> or rapidly or quickly or rush whatever. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, but of course, then he had the vision uh, that said, no, you need to go back and uh, 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 yeah. uh, face up <laughs> to the uh, to the uh, persecution. Yeah, and it, it very much backfired on Nero because oh, 
even even the Romans. That was yeah. Were he, that was over the top, even for the Romans. Yeah, and then he, he got a reputation for having caused the fire, which was unjustified, either because he wasn't in Rome during the fire. He came back and then he took advantage at the fire sales to buy up the land and build all kinds of, you know, ornate things, but at great expense that yes. bankrupted the empire. <laughs> but, um, Just about, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, Michael, real quick. I think one of the other students had a question about the homework. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. For next time, uh, let's start with, let's continue with, with, with part one. We didn't get all, oh, no, no. Well, I'm sorry. No, that's right. We got all the way to, sorry, we got through part one. Part if one. you can get to the exercises for part one, please do them. Okay. We will start in on part two next time, where we'll pick up the rest of the charts. Uh, I think there are, or most of them anyway. And so if you can start in on the part two exercise as well. Now, obviously, if you haven't got part one done, you know, do that first. And if you're still lacking uh, chapter five, do finish that up. Mm -hmm. um, and again, uh, do read the uh, Latine Disco uh, again and again, because it's going to cover a lot of this stuff. Um, whoops. Oh, shoot. Timed really timed out. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. They, they will talk uh, about a fair amount of this stuff. Um, so um, we will cover, as I said, we got to about uh, slide seven here. Eventually, we will pick up the uh, ablative of separation and the locative and the active and the passive. And I'm not exactly sure where in the text we hit those. I know it's later on. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do section two and as far along as you can get in the exercises. You got so, it. Yeah, no, you didn't have to do part two today. I, I, I hope I didn't say that last time. No. <laughs> So, all right, with that, let's uh, mute everybody and do the, um, the uh, closing prayer, oratio finalis. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat renium tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et emite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationen, sed libera nos amalo. And I did want to point out one thing, uh, is if you see the sanctificetur, that is a passive voice verb. So we will learn about these uh, these verbs eventually. I think it's in the next section, if I'm not mistaken. If not, it's in the third. But anyway, for that, um, we are done for the